The Rwandan genocide is a sad test in the mouth of many. It gave the worst image to Rwanda. In just a twinkle of an eye, more than 800,000 people were killed in the most horrendous and most despicable manner. Humanity was despised and the dignity of man was reduced to the lowest. The genocide brought grief to several families and left the country with scars. Though there had been the perennial distrust between the Tutsis and the Hutus, two of the major ethnic groups in Rwanda, leading to clashes of various dimensions in the past, the action that sparked the Rwandan genocide of 1994 was the shooting down of the plane that carried the president of the country, President Juvenal Habi Arimana, which led to the instant death of the president. President Juvenal was Hutu by tribe, and his assassination simply renewed the perennial hostility that had existed between these two dominant ethnic groups and escalated it to an unexpected dimension. In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the story of the assassination of President Juvenal Habi Arimana of Rwanda and the immediate consequence of the assassination. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Juvenal Habi Arimana was born on 8th March 1937. He was Hutu by tribe. Juvenal held a degree in mathematics and humanities from the College of St. Paul, Bukavu, in the then Belgian Congo. While some of his classmates went for their master's degrees and others ventured into other aspects of life, Juvenal sought enrollment in the army. He returned to Kigali and enrolled in the officer training school Kigali. He graduated in 1961 and was appointed as the ADC to the then Belgian commander of the force in Rwanda. Rwanda eventually gained independence in 1962 and in 1963, Juvenal was appointed as the head of the National Guards Brigade during the presidency of President Grigory Kayibanda. Two years later, President Grigory appointed him as the Minister of the National Guard and Police. He also served as Army Chief of Staff and Minister of Defense. While serving in this capacity, Juvenal seized power from his boss, President Grigory Kayibanda, in a military coup, arrested his boss and kept him under house arrest together with his wife. He then took the reins of power and served as President of Rwanda from July 1973 till April 1994 when he was assassinated. Altogether, Juvenal had been in power for 21 years. As president, he avoided the things that had made his predecessor unpopular. He embarked on a policy of involvement of the Tutsis and Hutus in good number in his government. Though he was Hutu by tribe, he did not make his government an all Hutu affair. He allowed room for the Tutsis to also participate in the governance of their country. For this departure from the past, the Juvenal was accepted and appreciated by many across tribal lines. Most Rwandans only hoped that the policy would last and last for long. Their hopes were however dashed. President Juvenal later returned to what had become the status quo for many years. He began to populate his government with members of his ethnic groups over and above other ethnic groups. Important offices in government were occupied by his people. This again brought distrust and ethnic tension in the country. President Juvenal was also accused by some members of his tribe of neglecting them and favoring just a handful of his tribal people. These dissatisfied Hutus teamed up with the Tutsis to work against the government of President Juvenal as much as they could. In a matter of time, President Juvenal faced serious opposition to his style of leadership and to his government as a whole. 
Juvenile also caused some amendments of the Constitution, which many did not applaud. For instance, the Constitution was amended to allow only one political party, the MRND, to operate in Rwanda. MRND was the president's party. All citizens of Rwanda were also made to belong to the said one political party. All this did not go down well with many people in Rwanda. The situation almost escalated and in a swift reaction, France, Rwanda's long-standing major financial backer, the IMF, the World Bank, and some very influential citizens of Rwanda at home and abroad intervened and admonished President Juvenal to allow for greater participation of people in politics and governance and for changes to be made to the economy. Juvenal accepted the admonition and allowed for the formation of other political parties such as the Republican Democratic Movement, the Social Democratic Party, the Liberal Party, and the Christian Democratic Party. This gesture reduced tension in some way in the country. Rwandans had some renewed hope and a sense of belonging in the country. But President Juvenal was going to face more opposition and in fact face an attack to his government in just a matter of time. In October 1990, a well-organized military attack against Juvenal's government began when rebels from the Rwandan Patriotic Front RPF, a force of mostly Tutsi Rwandan refugees and expatriates, most of whom had served in the Ugandan army, crossed the border from Uganda and invaded Rwanda. At that time, President Juvenal was in New York attending the United Nations World Summit for children. When he got wind of the situation at home, he requested France to offer him military assistance. France did as requested, but under the cover of protecting French nationals in Rwanda. President Mobutu Seseko of then Zaire also sent troops to Rwanda. Fighting went on for days, but the RPA was forced to retreat to the border and abandon the fight. President Juvenal accused President Yoweri Museveni of supporting the RPF. As at 30th October 1990, the war had ended and lost grounds had been regained by President Juvenal's men. But the reasons that led to the war were still fresh in the minds of the dissatisfied people. Three years after, President Juvenal saw reason to dialogue with the rebel group and on 4th August 1993, the Rwandan government and the RPF signed a historic accord known as the Arusha Accord to end finally the Rwandan's hostility and the civil war. A coalition government was agreed upon, but President Juvenal did not keep to the terms of the accord thus fueling more agitation in the country and a sense of distrust, especially with the RPF that had signed the accord with him. They felt betrayed and taken for granted. The country was back to where it came from. There was a general sense of dissatisfaction on many fronts and no one knew what was going to happen next. Juvenal continued nonetheless in his administration and continued to pull the shot as the president of the country. In April 1994, President Juvenal traveled out of Rwanda in a presidential jet. He traveled to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania to take part in a discussion on ways to end bloodletting and ethnic cleansing in Burundi where an estimated 100,000 people had been killed. The pilot of the jet was a French citizen by name Jackie Herald, with Jean Pierre Minaberry as co pilot. The plane arrived in Tanzania safely, and the meeting went on as scheduled. 
When done with the meeting, President Juvenal headed to the Dar es Salaam International Airport in Tanzania, where the presidential jet was parked from where he was scheduled to travel home. For this return trip, President Juvenal Habia Rimana offered to take President Cyprian Ntari Amira of neighboring Burundi with him in his jet, which was considered to be a much faster jet. The president of Burundi accepted the offer and joined President Juvenal in his jet. Some of the ministers that went to the meeting with the president of Burundi also joined in President Juvenal's jet. The total number of passengers in the jet thus increased to nine, while the crew members were three, making it a total of 12 persons on board the plane. The jet took off from Dar es Salaam International Airport in Tanzania and the destination of the flight was Bujumbura International Airport. But the jet was to make a brief stopover at the Kigali International Airport, Rwanda, to drop President Juvenal and his entourage before the continuation of flight to drop President Cyprian in Burundi. Of all the 12 passengers on board the plane, none of them was away of what was waiting for them in the skies. The plane taxied through the tarmac and took off smoothly with no issues whatsoever. It arrived in the skies of Kigali in Rwanda and began its final descent in preparation for landing. This was where the unexpected occurred. Someone was somewhere aiming at the jet and it was just a matter of time for the jet to be shot and crashed to the ground. A few minutes before 8.20 p.m. local time, the presidential jet carrying President Juvenal, President Cyprian, and the rest of the passengers and crew circled around the Kigali International Airport in its last preparation for landing. As this was going on, there was a bang, and the bang was a surface-to-air missile which struck the presidential jets. The first shot landed on the wings of the jet, and in no time, there was a second shot which landed on the tail of the jet. These were delicate parts of the plane, and in consequence, the plane crash landed and broke into pieces. All passengers on board, including the crew members, died in the crash. Before the crash, the plane had erupted into flames in mid-air before crashing into the garden of the presidential palace in Kigali. There was pandemonium in the presidential quarters and in Kigali as a whole. In no time, the news filtered in that President Juvenal Habi Arimana of Rwanda had been assassinated in a plane crash. President Juvenal was Hutu by tribe and the news did not go down well with the Hutus. Several theories emerged. It was first alleged that the president's jet was brought down by members of the RPF, Rwandan Patriotic Front, and in particular, it was alleged that the orders for the downing of the jet was given by the then commander of the RPF, Paul Kigame. Paul Kigame immediately debunked the allegation, and a judicial inquiry by France did not also find him guilty. There was another theory that the plane was brought down by some dissident Hutus who were not happy with President Juvenal. In all these theories, the world did not know what was awaiting Rwanda in the days following the assassination of President Juvenal. There was angry reaction to the assassination. The fragile court, which held the Tutsis and Hutus together in Rwanda, was immediately broken and terror was let loose. Armed Hutu militias were mobilized to attack the Tutsis throughout the country and kill them in their numbers. High-ranking Hutu government officials who were suspected of having a hand in the assassination or of lending support or giving information to facilitate the assassination were equally killed. In no time, the situation degenerated into anarchy. In a matter of days, several persons were killed. People were killed in thousands. 
the Tutsis were the worst hits. Radio became a veritable tool of destruction. Through the radio, the Hutus were brainwashed to take arms and kill any Tutsi in their midst. Members of the Rwandan security forces were mandated to lead in the attack. Houses were destroyed and lives were also destroyed in thousands. The killing was systematic and went on from day to day. When the situation was no more bearable to the Tutsis, they equally mobilized and attacked back in self-defense. Within a short period of time, Rwanda became a killing field. No gender was spared. No age was spared. Women, men, the elderly people and children were killed in thousands. It was a genocide by every definition. And when the head count was taken, more than 800,000 human lives had been destroyed in just a matter of weeks. The catalyst that sparked the violence was the assassination of President Juvenal Habi Arimana in the shooting down of his plane. Rwanda became the talking point of the world and the world was also accused of not doing enough to stop the genocide. Rwanda has moved into the future and it is now 29 years since the assassination but the story of the assassination of President Juvenal Habi Arimana and the violence that followed his assassination shall remain in the history books of Rwanda, Africa, and the world for many years to come. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video.